Podplay presents How to Bury the Pets, starring Hugh Ross and Jonathan Davis, written by David B. Harris. Suburbia. It doesn't matter where. It's a town like any other. Close enough to the city, but far enough away that the filters work. A nice, clean place to buy property, send your kids to school, and still have all the comforts of Home Depot, Cheesecake Factory, and a bed, bath, and beyond. In one of its handful of strip malls sits a big corporate, illy lit, aisle after aisle of pet support. Pet food, pet waste disposal, pet beds, pet treats and toys, and various expendable smaller animals all for sale. Birds, lizards, those sad little solitary betta fish in their single serving Tupperware containers, all packed into this mostly empty, behemoth of a space. A young black man, Miles, stands behind the counter. A white man in his 40s, Dan, approaches him. Can I help you? Yeah, uh, that's what I'm doing. Give me a minute to get some help. Just, just keep your eye on the one you want. Hey, man. Can I help you? How long do mice live? What kind of mice? You know, you know, the mice. The mice that you're selling over there. Male or female? I don't know. Uh, Which is better? Males can end up fighting each other. Uh, Females are pretty docile, but you should buy them in pairs. Social animals. Are you buying them for food? What? For food. Uh, Pythons, large predatory pets. Ah, ah. (laughs) I see. Ooh, geez, that's awful. I I thought you meant, like, you know, people eat them and... Uh, Jesus, don't, please don't say that too loudly around the girls. They're going to want to buy all of them. Oh, fuck, now I want to buy all of them. Dan pauses, locking eyes with Miles. Miles could give a shit. Dan nods and turns back to where he has been shouting. All right, girls, you you can pick two uh, of the girls. They they like to live together. Uh, I guess we'll take two then, two ladies. Miles sighs and opens a drawer by the cash register. He rummages through the drawer until he finds some paperwork. He grabs a pen and a clipboard and fills out the top portion. Great. Just, uh, you know, keep your eyes on them. I'm sure this isn't going to take long. A beat as Miles looks at Dan, then continues to fill out the paperwork with no sense of urgency. The, uh, the kids are going through a divorce and I thought they could, well, you know, they aren't. I am with my wife. Yeah. Things have been tough. I I thought they could use a pet. You know, something happy to get them through. Miles hands him the clipboard. What is this? Uh, Animal purchase agreement. (laughs) This seems somewhat serious, doesn't it? Store policy. By signing, I hereby commit to giving responsible, humane care for this animal. I mean, not to be a dick, but a second ago you asked me if it was for food or not. There's a clause. Keep reading. As part of our Wonder Adoption Program, we will take any pet back to find a home or appropriate end. Appropriate end? What's that? Keep reading. Which could entail offering the pet as food for larger pets, completing a life cycle as it may have been intended. (laughs) Holy shit. Yeah, that's some confused, badly read material right there. Or you could just tell me you're buying it for food and I could give you the short-term form that you check off on the receipt. Yeah, let's, uh, let's go with that option. Yeah. Miles tears up the purchase agreement and throws it into a small wastebasket. Okay, uh, two, right? Two. I need two feeders from the mouth bin, please. Okay, okay, listen, I... Come on, I really don't want the girls to know about that. Yeah? Uh Uh-huh. Okie dokie. It's gonna be a minute. So, I'll just wait over there, right? Mm-hmm. Listen, don't, don't, come on, don't fight. There's got to be about 50 damn mice in that thing. 20 minutes later, Miles is texting on his phone. Dan approaches, carrying bedding, food, various treats, and a bright box containing a rodent cage. Hey, uh, you know, it's been like 20 minutes, and that, that guy still hasn't shown up over there. Miles stares at Dan blandly. The mouse bin? You don't remember me? Uh, I'll check on that for you. Yeah? Uh Uh-huh. Okie dokie. It's gonna be a minute. 
Right. Well, you know, one of them isn't moving anymore, so you might want to clean that up. One of your kids or the mice? Is that a joke? I certainly hope so. Look, someone will be out to help you in a minute. Okay. Why can't you do it? I'm not authorized to handle livestock. Great. So, maybe I could just pay for all this crap so that I can just get out of here when Moses decides to come down from the mountain. Moses ain't on today, man. It's Latrice. Can I just pay for this, please? You a Pet Power Rewards member? Nope. I could offer you access today. Access? You get 5% off our already low prices. No, thank you. I'd like to be denied access. And a free can of Pet Pal food every month? Not interested. We offer pet workshops every month? Come on, man. I'm buying mice, not alpacas. I don't need a workshop. Look, Miles, is it? Normally, I wouldn't bother a nice clerk such as yourself because your job sucks. And no one deserves to get a shit time when they're punching away at minimum wage. But... You're going to text me, email me, put my phone number into a a secret voicemail spam chain. I know how these things end up. Do you think I'm ever going to step foot in this store again? In the nine years I've lived here, breathing the hellfire that is my life, I have been in here once. This time, right here. And if it wasn't for that new fro-yo place they put in next door, I could have got away with blazing past here every time on my way to CVS. I'm going to buy these shitty little mice for my girls. I'm going to divorce my wife. I'm going to move out and get on with it. These mice will be dead like the myth of my marriage within a few short months. We'll have a sweet little bullshit funeral in the backyard, and that will be that. I will be right there. Fifty-four ninety-nine. Thank you, Miles. Latrice is back for a break. She'll be right there. In a suburban garage sits a simple folding table. Some storage boxes underneath read Xmas, taxes, and wedding. A simple light hangs above. Atop the table sits a brightly colored rodent cage with meandering plastic tunnels and exercise wheels. Hey, guys. Brought you some carrots. Uh, Sorry, we had to move you out here. Seems somehow unfair, but fitting. I live in the playroom now. Yeah, fuck me is right. There, now. That seems more civilized. Well, hello, Dr. Marshmallow. What's that? Fuck the overlords? Right. Keep fighting? That's the spirit. It's really the only way to stay alive. Keep fucking the overlords. Dan raises his fist into the air and shuts off the lights. Good night, you little shits. Meanwhile, Miles is at the cash register at the pet store, counting out his cash drawer at the end of the day. Wow. Latrice, you there? What kind of world keeps a giant store with massive overhead open to create a facade of holding on? I'm talking about the world being all sorts of fucked up. I've been here all day. And all that's in this drawer is $623.83. How is that even possible? That's barely enough to cover the floor staff. It doesn't even touch the rent. <sighs> what, baby? No, baby. No. No, we're gonna be fine. That baby gonna be fine. We're not like the rest. We got this. Like business. It's just business. Like this store. Look at the fat. We can get at it. The fat on the outside. Bulging. Showing itself. We can get some of that fat. It's still out there. I believe in this baby. I believe in you. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna lock up my drawer. I love you, baby. No. No, I love you. Okay, baby. It's now dawn in Dan's garage. Dan is pushing a tie taut against his neck as he looks down at the cage. Oh, fuck me. Back at the checkout stand, Miles rearranges some dog treats on the side of the register. Dan enters carrying a small brown lunch sack. Can I help you? Yeah, you sold me this yesterday? I I sold you a paper bag. Don't be a wise ass. You sold me what's inside. 
Can you tell me what's inside? Why can't you look? Because people are freaky. It's one of the mice. You don't remember me? Miles contemplates the bag. There's not much movement coming from inside that bag. That's because the thing is dead. Did you bring your receipt? It was yesterday. How many people bring dead mice into here trying to trick you into giving them new alive ones? Oh, you mean you want to exchange the mouse? Yes. Preferably quickly, so my Dr. Marshmallow doppelganger is in place before my girls notice. Miles opens the drawer, rustles through some paper, and pulls out a clipboard. Miles reads from the document. Can you tell me what is the reason for your exchange? Yes, Miles. The mouse is too dead for my liking. Deceased? Did you kill the mouse, sir? No. I came into the garage, and the mouse garage. was dead. Garage. And the mouse mm. was dead. Miles checks something off on his clipboard. Is this a feeder mouse? A feeder? No, it's here in the bag. All of it. No drumsticks or anything missing. Did you sign the animal purchase agreement? What? No. You really don't remember me. Miles delivers Dan a bland look. We had this long conversation, and you said it would be easier if I just called it a feeder. So it is a feeder. Dude. What the fuck? I just need a new mouse. I'll pay for it. Whatever. No need, sir. We guarantee our feeders. Well, then why are we arguing about this, then? No arguments. I just need a receipt. Unless, of course, you are a Pet Pals Rewards member. Nope. Well, I can grant you access. You know what? Fuck it. I'll just buy a new one. They're only five bucks. Dan retrieves his wallet and plops down a 20. Will this be a pet mouse? No, Miles. Simply a feeder, Miles. Just a feeder. Miles changes out Dan's 20 and hands him the receipt and a pen. And if you could just initial that receipt. That way there won't be any confusion when you come back. The only confusion is on your side, pal. Dan signs the receipt and hands it back to Miles. And mark my words, I am never, ever stepping foot into this store ever again. Can I get my mouse? I'll call Latrice. Right, Latrice. I'll wait over there for her. Wait, sir. Miles holds up the paper bag. Uh, you forgot this. Uh, yeah, I don't need that. Well, I can't take this, sir. It's, it's not a tip. It's a dead mouse in a paper bag. We are not equipped to dispose of a guest's pet pal. I'm not asking for a funeral procession. Just chunk it in the trash. I'm afraid that not only goes against our corporate policy, but also our corporate culture. We don't chuck our pet pals anywhere. It's not a pal anymore. It's decomposing. It's a rotting rodent. A past pest. That's one fucked furwad. Miles shakes the bag at Dan. Dan snaps the bag from Miles. Thanks for coming in. Dan snarls and walks off. Miles picks up the phone. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Okie dokie. It's gonna be a minute. Dan enters the garage with a small cardboard mouse carrier. He pulls another mouse from it, quickly depositing it into the mouse cage. There you go, Dr. Marshmallow II. Our little secret. That's Henrietta. She's okay. If you're not careful, she'll shit on your back, but I expect that might be normal for you guys. He pulls up a chair staring into the cage. I always wanted a bird growing up. Something happy in my room. My parents split up. Man, a lot worse than me and Deb. Just a little bird, something that sang in the morning. But I I think about a bird in a cage. Man, that's not right. But then, you know, generations of you fuckers between walls. You guys are about survival, not freedom. Still, a caged bird. Something small. Something pretty. Dan checks the mouse cage, pulling out a small green plastic bowl. He retrieves a small, colorful bag of mouse food from beside the cage and shakes it. It's empty. Girls! Girls! Could you bring down some cereal for the mice? We're out of food. Girls? Shit. Back at the pet store, Miles is on the phone with Latrice. You know what I heard about modern business? The ones that are really big, they work on a deficit. Meaning they lose money. Yeah, like you and me, baby. You see? They lose money, yet their stock goes higher and higher. Yeah. We just need to get some stock in us. Gotta get out from the store into the light. (laughs) <laughs> She's kicking? Really? Oh, that's great. 
See, I told you she was just sleeping for a bit. You worry too much. Go on. Do it. Put the phone up to her. Hi, little girl. Daddy loves you. It's gonna be all right. Miles looks around to see if anyone is watching. He closes his eyes and sings into the phone. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Papa's gonna buy you a mockingbird. And if that mockingbird don't sing, Papa's gonna buy you a diamond ring. And if that diamond ring is bright... Later at the checkout stand, Miles self-administers eye drops. Dan enters urgently. Miles! Miles! How can I help you, sir? Miles, listen, you gotta help me. One of the mice is freaking out. It's constantly... Dan frantically gesticulates and acts like an itchy mouse for a less than amused Miles. You know, scratching herself and licking... I'd be happy to help you, sir. What kind of pet pal are we talking about? Miles, it, it's me, man. Soon to be divorced white guy trying to make it all okay. Come on. We're in suburbia, sir. Okay, fine. I've been in here a couple of times, bought some mice. Are they feeders or pets? Miles, fuck that. We're not doing that anymore. You remember me. You made me take the dead mouse back, Dr. Marshmallow. I left that carcass in my car. Do you know what my car smells like now? Miles, it ain't pleasant, man. But I'm willing to overlook our previous relationship flaws because I need your help, brother. You, you, you gotta help me. The other mouse is freaking out. My girl's... Well, you know, I'm worried about scarring. Wait, who is scarring? No, no. I, I, I'm worried about my girls, man. What, I'm, what am I doing? Dude, what is going on with the mouse? A lot of people don't know this, but... Ah, ha, ha, information. Praise Jesus. Mice are very sensitive. And? Like, emotionally, physically? All of the above. So... What are you feeding the mice? All right, well, I ran out of food, so the girls were giving her... Shit, I don't know. Frosted flakes? So that's bad. Miles takes a moment. Staring at Dan. Don't these fucking things eat drywall and car wiring? Not exactly the paleo diet. Corn is a no-no. Processed corn with sugar is even worse. Okay, okay. I can work with that. So I just buy new food. Of course, it could be bedding or mites as well. Bedding. Mites. Do you have mites in the house? Mites? Microscopic vermin. Well, you know, the last time I had my proton goggles on at home, how the hell would I know if I had microscopic mites? What kind of bedding are you using? Uh, newspaper, I think, yeah. Is it newspaper or is it something else? It, it could be recycled printer paper. No, no, no. Okay, okay, it's not. Uh, what if, what if it was newspaper? It would need to be a newspaper that uses soy-based ink, like... The New York Times. Yeah, I don't get the New York Times. Mm, I figured. Well, what the hell is that supposed to mean? It sounds like you have a couple factors that you need to narrow down. What, not reading the New York Times thing or the scratchy, crazy, psycho mouse thing? I would eliminate all possible allergens. Once the scratching stops, reintroduce the factors in question one at a time. It will take a while, but narrowing down the culprits, you should be able to give your pet pal a good, happy, and healthy home. Dan takes a couple of really deep breaths. Miles. I have this thing called a full-time. I haven't been so good at it lately. It's a job as a consultant for an investment firm. I'm supposed to be out there looking for new business opportunities, looking for young people with that new idea. This is an issue for me. I, I, I can't get to it. Uh, I can't get into it. I'm not making it. I'm barely holding on. I'm going through a very, very shitty fucking divorce, man. I have two girls that seem to cost more money than backing a Brinks truck up into a wood chipper, and my Toyota Tundra smells like a dead hooker thanks to a deceased as fuck Dr. Marshmallow the First. Will you please, please, just tell me what to buy, and I will buy it. How long have you been a consultant? What? I don't know. Uh... Uh, 15 years, 3 years at this new firm. And what you looking for, like like the new Facebook or something? I don't know, I guess. I mean, you know, whatever these millennial motherfuckers get hard thinking about. I'm out of touch, man, but I gotta hold on to this job. I get it. It sounds a whole hell of a lot better than working here, though. I guess. Right. 
I'll get Latrice to help you with that stuff. Miles picks up the phone as Dan sadly shuffles off. Yeah. Uh huh. Okie dokie. It's a fucking minute. Yeah, Miles. Yeah. Back in the garage, Dan wears bright yellow cleaning gloves and changes out the bedding. He looks into the cage, trying to spot Henrietta the mouse. He stares into one of the colorful pipes that makes up the now more intricate cage. It seems that Dan can't stop buying shit for the mice. You hiding in the pipe? Oop, there you are. You getting better? Why aren't you moving? Shit. Oh man, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Dan pulls yet another dead mouse from the cage. Dr. Marshmallow the second. Good God, it's an epidemic. Dan gently lays down the dead mouse. He crouches down, rummaging through some of the boxes below the table. He produces a gift bag and some brightly colored tissue paper. Dan gently wraps the dead mouse in the tissue paper and places it into the gift bag. He peers into the cage again. Henrietta, what's, what's going on? Why is this so shitty? Why does everything suck so bad? Dan reaches in, pulling the only remaining survivor mouse out, mostly bald, pink skin irritated. He palms her, speaking directly to its fuzzy little face. What do I, take you out back and bash you with the shovel? I mean, this is no existence. The mouse looks up at Dan. Oh, hi. Oh, your face is still cute. Everything is so... sad. It's just so terribly sad. And look at you in this cage, watching your friends die. I killed him. I did it. Okay, so what do I do? Do I smother you with a very small pillow, poison you, snap your neck? Man. Okay, okay, listen. We're gonna figure this shit out, Henrietta. We're gonna figure it out. Dan puts the mouse back into the cage. He looks down at her, taking deep, determined breaths. We gotta figure this shit out. Dan crouches even further down, now eye level with the cage. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Papa's gonna buy you a mockingbird. And if that mockingbird don't sing, Papa's gonna buy you a diamond ring. And if that diamond ring is... Uh, if that diamond ring is... Okay, good night. Dan quietly exits. He forgets the gift bag left behind with the very dead Dr. Marshmallow II resting in it. The Pod Play is brought to you in part by Strand Brewing Company. Refining the craft beer movement in Los Angeles since 2009, Strand Brewing grew from a couple of guys in one overloaded and beat up minivan to a statewide distribution brew house that includes restaurants up and down the West Coast to Costco and Whole Foods and a thriving 36,000 foot brew space slash tap room. I caught up with Joel, owner and brewer, to discuss the common thread in any successful startup, creativity and the skill of putting one foot in front of the other. I believe in doing the right thing, I mean, doing the best for the greatest number of people. I really wish that we lived in a world where more people could trust a look in the eye and a handshake. You know, we've created a, a place here where people who you might think otherwise would never talk to each other are sitting at a table together enjoying each other's company over beer. Because it all happens here. The ideas happen here, the brewing happens here, yeah. and then the pouring happens here. My beer is my beer. Yes. I love that I live and die by that. You know, really, it's there's really very little room for error. I enjoy that. And if there's a zombie apocalypse in the meantime, you have to kill some zombies. Sure, yeah, I'm totally willing to kill zombies. That's part of brewing. <laughs> Everyone knows that. To hear more on this and other successful creative business owners talk about their own thoughts on the creative process that drives their businesses, check out thepodplay.com slash creative drivers or search it out anywhere you get your podcasts. 
Strand Brewing Company, bringing you the best beachside beer since 2009. At the cash register, Miles leans, talking on the phone. No, no, the guy didn't say that. He said it was standard stuff. I really don't think it's a black thing, baby. Yes. I think he thinks you're going to be a good mama. Genetic testing. No, it's not like that. Dan enters, peeling cash out of his pocket. Miles turns away from Dan to continue his phone conversation. No, it tests to see if your baby's... You know, different. You know, different. Miles turns away from Dan, shielding his mouth. Retarded. They want to know if it's retarded. No, it's not retarded. Because that's what they do. So you know if you don't want it, then you know what you need to do. Look, baby, I got a customer. Are you okay? You sure? Okay. Miles gently hangs up. He turns to Dan. Hey, Dan. <laughs> me? Yeah, you, Dan. You kill some more mice? Miles, you see me. I'm real. You got girls, right? Like baby girls? Yes, Miles. I have two. God, I really feel like we've reached a milestone here. A Miles tone. <laughs> okay, right. Miles leans in. And are they yours? <laughs> yes. Yes, they are filled with all of this wonderfully fucked DNA. Yo, lady, she go nuts when she was pregnant? You know, she never really came back, Miles. Mentally. I was a real piece of shit until I found the trees. But she's different. She makes me want to do things. Not fuck up. Think differently. Build something. You know what I mean? That's called love, Miles. Yeah, man. Yeah, love. Hey, I know this is kind of weird, but... Miles pulls a folded envelope out of his back pocket. I have this, uh, business idea. Oh, neat. You don't forget it. No, no, wait, I, no, I, I'd like to see it. You said neat. That's a white guy for a fuck off, hard. I don't, I don't think that's true. Miles, may I please read your business idea? Miles hands him the envelope. It's the first draft. You know, really just looking for some thoughts. Okay, Miles. I'd be happy to read it. Thank you. Really, don't mention it. I'm a bit busy, but... Right. Uh, I mean... You know, I'll get to it. Super grateful. So what's going on with your mouse? The one that's scratching and shit? Uh, she's mostly bald. Just sits in her tube. I think she's gone batshit nuts. She's got OCD. These mice, they are real prone to OCD. You're fucking kidding me. OC fucking D? Yep. Very sensitive animals. She probably fell into it from whatever she was allergic to. Fell into it? You fall into a drunken depression, mostly by drinking while, well, you know, being depressed. You can't just fall into OCD. Don't you have to be molested or, you know, made to wear dresses by your overbearing mother? Like I said, very sensitive. Well, okay, what do I do? How do I make it fall out of OCD? They get tired of the same routine. Okay. Okay, makes sense. Try burying her food. Like in the backyard? No, in the cage. Underneath the bedding. We can search it out. All right, well, I don't know about you, but if God started hiding my breakfast in different beds, it might make me feel like he's fucking with me. You're not a god, and they know that. Oh, they do? It's busting up the routine. Takes their mind off their problems. Okay. Okay, I can do that. And what day do you clean their habitat? The cage? When do you clean the cage exactly? (laughs) Exactly? Oh, well, you know, let's check my Google Calendar. Oh, look at that. It's not in there. Listen, I scream at my kids to do it. They don't. So when it starts to stink, I get around to it. Miles gives him a stare. Okay, I'll get better at cleaning the cage. Get her a new friend, another mouse, and hide her food, and clean the habitat more often than not. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, so listen, I'll I don't pick- think it's my kid, man. Whoa. What? Latrice, I think she fucked my brother. Man, oh man, this is not the interaction I thought I was getting today. But how do I find out? I mean, suspicion. 
That's fucked up. I already judged and juried. I say to myself, it don't matter. I'll raise the baby either way. I mean, I mean, Latrice can't raise a baby on her own. Fuck, Miles. I'm sorry, brother. Oh, man. Don't call me brother. Oh, right. Uh, sorry. Miles snaps out of his sharing mode. He assumes his corporate persona once again. So will you be purchasing a feeder mouse with us today then, sir? What? Wait. Whoa. Uh, what just happened? The feeder mice. You planning on purchasing another? Wait, uh, we're done with our conversation, I guess? Well, uh, what can I help you with? We were talking about you and your girl, and... I can call the trees right now. There won't be any wait. Are you a Pet Pals reward member? Okay, Miles. Dan takes out his wallet and hands over a five. I'll take another mouse. You take care of yourself, Miles. Thanks for taking a pause and shopping with us. Dan smiles, kind of, and walks off. Miles shakes it off. Shit. A couple of days go by and Dan comes bursting through the doors once more. <laughs> Miles! Hey, Miles! You're back, and so soon. She stopped scratching. Your mouse? Yes, yes. Her friend ID and hiding the food. <laughs> it's, it's actually working. So, mission accomplished. What are you doing here? Well, you know, it occurred to me... Oh, boy. It occurred to me that Henrietta... The mouse. Man, it is so nice having you on the same page as me. Oh, your business idea. Oh, uh, you read it? Uh, no, not yet, but, you know, it's on my desk. Okay, uh, on your desk. Got you. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so busy. No, man, no, I get it. I, I'm gonna get to it. Neat. Go on about your mouse. Right, well, Henrietta, she may have some issues. Yes, issues for days. And just dropping a sane, regular Dr. Marshmallow the Third in there might make one a touch fucked up. Okay, you lost me. Okay, uh, say you're a mouse. I'm not a mouse. No, I know. Pretend with me. I'm not pretending to be a white motherfucking mouse, Dan. Okay. Okay. Fuck pretending. Uh, say you're a creature. I am a proud black man. Okay. Okay. Say you're a proud black man. I am a proud black man. And a giant hand takes you from your family and puts you with some bald crazy motherfucker in the middle of nowhere. You can hear yourself, right? No, 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 not that. Yeah, let's just ignore 400 years of that. I don't... I'm, I'm not saying... Just stop. Okay. You're saying you're going to buy into the mouse. Yeah, yeah, because if I... Because if Henrietta sees two mice acting normal, then maybe, just maybe, she'll come back around. Right. Because... You just drop one in there and good old Henrietta will just drive her batshit. Right. Good plan, Dan. Thank you, Miles. Can I ask you a question? Sure. The kids know about any of this? No, no. I think I'm pretty good at it. Mmm. I guess that's... Not a thing to be good at? I mean, have you told them about the divorce? Oh. Oh, I get it. Is that too personal, Dan? Well, uh, listen, it just sounded like you were going to drop some, you know. You ever tell a nigga joke, Dan? <laughs> what? That's an uncomfortable question for me to ask you, but I'm not going to ask you that question, Dan. Instead, let's go back to the earlier question of the two. I just asked if you told the kids about your impending divorce. Well... Listen, it's not that simple. I mean, you know, lawyers and... Maybe instead of buying and systematically killing mice in your garage, you should just tell your kids. Shit, I bet they already know. You know, I'm, I'm kind of not okay with this conversation. You want the nigga question? Miles faces down Dan. Dan is out of steam. Okay, Dan. One more mouse. A feeder? Yes, Miles. A feeder. Jesus Christ. What? I'm scared, all right, man? I'm scared. I don't want to lose my kids. They're the only proof I have that I can do something that is not, you know, completely fucked up. No, well, I'm sure they're fucked up in their own special way. I'm going to lose them, Miles. I'm going to lose them, and I'm going to be a stranger that sometimes buys them ice cream and makes them feel uncomfortable because of space and time. Well, you can fight for custody. All this fighting... It's making me a weak piece of shit. I just want everything to be okay. No one's okay, Dan. 
That ain't your fault. Half of marriages end up in this shit. That ain't your fault either. But this is happening to me, Miles. To my kids. Let me remind you of something. I want you to think back on when you were a kid. All right, all right. Is this the N-word joke question again? When you were a kid, your parents fought. What did you feel? Bad, Miles. And when it was over, the fighting, what did you feel? About my parents? About all of it. How did you feel? Well, you know, they were different. They were... I don't give a shit about them. I just want to know how you felt. Well, I guess... I don't know. I can't remember. Bullshit. It didn't matter to you. Kids don't work like that. You either feel safe or unsafe. Waiting for the monster is worse than dealing with it head on. For you and them. Once. Once what? I retold a, you know, little joke I heard. To a friend of mine. But you know what? He was a black friend. I don't think that makes it much better. How did that go? It was a disaster. You want to hear it? No. No, Dan. I don't want to hear it. Okay. Okay. Can I get that feeder mouse, Miles? Almost a year has passed, and Miles busies himself with the mundane work of the pet store. The phone calls to Latrice occurred less and less until they stopped altogether. Sometimes, Miles stares out the shop window, and if no one comes in for an hour or so, he breaks down and cries. I mean, really cries. Like uncomfortable moans, grunts, squeaks, and full-on snotty misery. However, Miles is a survivor and always pulls himself together. Then one day, Dan came back. He had grown a mustache and now dons a jaunty hat. He's trying too hard, but for God's sakes, at least he's trying. Dan enters to find the cash register sitting empty. The phone rings. No one answers. Dan places a small paper bag on the counter. Hello? Hello? I'll be there in a minute. Miles! Miles! Is that you? Miles! Just a minute, thanks. No, 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 take your time. I mean, it's been a while, right? One minute, sir. Miles wanders out, carrying various boxes of cat treats and toys. How can I help you? Miles! It's me! <sighs> Do I know you? It's Dan! Come on, the dude with all the mice! Miles nods, kind of, and heads to the register. How you been? Uh, fine. Thanks. Was this a feeder or a pet? No way I'm taking this, okay? No. Come on. So, tell me, because it's, it's been killing me, man. How's Latrice? How's the kid? What's the name? You came in here to jack me up at work? Talk to me about Latrice? Oh, no. No, 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 no. I mean, I was in the neighborhood with my girlfriend and her kid, the Froyo place. You don't recognize me, do you? Miles takes a moment, blandly staring at Dan. Nope. Ah, you know why? It's the mustache. Dan covers his mustache up with his finger. Miles stares. Maybe the hat, too? Dan takes his hat off, rolling it dramatically down his arm, posing. Miles is really not into this customer. Okay, yeah. Hey, hey, hey! Hello. No, not really. Come on. About a year ago, you sold me some mice. I was getting divorced, scared of the next step. Uh... Okay, right. We're in suburbia. Lots of white people problems. So, uh, how are your mice then? Ah... Uh... Dan. Right. Dan. Dan, Dan. The guy that likes to tell the nigga jokes. Of course I remember you, Dan. No one is as fucked up as you. <laughs> uh, you got me. I got you. <laughs> All your mice be dead, right? Oh, man, you know, two weeks later after I bought the last two, the OCD one and one of the new ones were dead. The <laughs> girls, they were so over that shit, the oldest one told me to just let the other one go. I guess I wasn't drinking any of them. But one of them, I guess, found a dead one in a gift bag, which they left for my ex-wife to discover. I tried my best to discuss picking a place where the remaining surviving mouse would be happy, and my daughter, being all of eight years old, tells me, you know, you know what she says? I would have no idea. She says, 
It doesn't matter, Dad. It won't survive. <laughs> Dan waits for some acknowledgement. Miles is kind of horrified. Kids, right? Well, I'm glad that all uh, worked out. The girls never gave a shit about the mice. I manifested my grief of my family falling apart into this cage of sickly dying mini mammals. I knew that the minute you came in here. You did? Who do you think our customer base is? <laughs> huh. Miles looks out into the parking lot. A woman idles in a small red compact car, waiting for Dan. Is that your new girl? Yeah, yeah, Cindy. <laughs> Look, she's waving. Oh, hi. Hi, Cindy. Uh, she's great. She's just... She's just nice, you know? She's just nice to me. That's great, ma'am. And she has kids? Yeah, just one. A little girl, Kelly. A little Kelly. How do you two get along? Really well. Good kid. Good little girl. And how about your girls? Good. Real good. No. Mm, no what? You lost the custody thing. I didn't. But you don't have joint custody, do you? I... I couldn't fight anymore. You know, it's 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 better this way. They are good. Uh-huh. I get to see them every other weekend. Okay. What? What? Nothing. It's none of my business. Ah, I see. You know what? You sound like her. She wanted to fight with all this shit. I figured some stuff out, and now she's all judgy. I'm not judging. I barely know you. You're right, Miles. I know I'm right. So, what about you? Me what? You know, your situation. I work till 7, got a lunch hour. Nope. Yup. Double check the shitty little schedule on the wall. You keep the kid. Look man, this is weird now. I sold you mice, you killed the mice. Then disappeared and had lots of weird white middle-aged sex. And then you forgot about how much you hurt and whined and oozed around everywhere like a sad bitch of a slug. Sad bitch of a slug. And now you want to march in here like I give a shit and find out if I'm unhappy. No, I wasn't. Yeah, because you figured it all out. The black kid made you feel like you had so far to go. But in reality, you were always the champ. Getting back on your feet. Getting back into the fight. Well, I am feeling better. And what of the young black man down at the pet shop? How was he faring? I remember some very colorful conversations with him. I should drop in on him. I'm sure he'll still be there. In that shitty job with his shitty life. Remember that business idea he had? Oh, that was a valiant try. Too bad I don't give a shit enough to do my goddamn job and read it. Ah, good to be white. Okay, all right. Now, listen, wait a minute. I'm taking care of the kid without her. Miles. It wasn't mine. It's the Froyo guys. He wanted her to abort it, but she had too many abortions already. She wants the option. Listen, I'm... So instead of this kid going to the system, I stepped up. It's what I'm doing. Wow. This shit's hard, man. Expensive, time-consuming. Yeah. Miles, I'm, I'm sorry. Because I did the right thing? Maybe, but no. Listen, it's going to matter. All kindness matters. It's, it's the only... Thing that matters. Listen, it takes no forethought, no follow through to be a self serving prick. It's the kind moments that matter, that that sticks. Maybe, brother. Maybe. No, no, no. No, no, no. Definitely, definitely. I suppose it's kind of cool that you stopped in here just to say hi. Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, uh, uh, and your business idea. I just found that the other day. My idea? It's been over a year. I know, I know. I'm sorry. It's just that, uh, you know, I quit that job, went into business for myself, and... Never bothered to read it. Well, life kind of got in the way. Uh-huh. I think it's good. Of course it's good. I wouldn't have shared it with your dumbass if I didn't think it was good. I think it could work. I think it could have worked if you hadn't quit your goddamn job. What is it to do now, Dan? What does the world have to offer a poor, middle-aged, divorced, broken white man? Do you make him scarves and sell them on Etsy? Or do you push hot yoga packages on the Lululemon set? Oh, wait. No, I got it. You're microbrewing hard kombucha in your parents' basement. I do love dreams, Dan. Dreams keep America alive! Wow. What a dick. Oh, I'm a dick. You're, you're a dick. You're calling me a dick. Because you are. Dan and Miles stared down each other for a moment. 
I like your idea, Miles. Thank you, Dan. Dan reaches into his wallet and pulls out a business card. He hands it to Miles. Dan Driver, Venture Capital? Even if I thought your idea was good, I wouldn't have been able to sell it to my old company. Because you know why, Miles? Why? Because all those motherfuckers love to tell N-word jokes, Miles. And if they take up your idea, brilliant or not, they'd have to stop. And they don't want to stop. They want it all to stay the same. That ain't news, Dan. Miles holds Dan's strong gaze for a moment. Oh, well, I didn't like them much. I like you, Miles. And on point, I like your idea. I'd like to talk about it outside of here. Like a meeting. To talk about your idea. You don't seem very excited. I don't get excited. I'm about to change your life. We'll see. What's in the bag, Dan? Dan reaches out and snatches the bag off the counter. Oh, nothing. Dan, what's in the bag? It's a dead pet pal, isn't it, Dan? No. Kinda. Okay, it is. But I swear, I was gonna talk to you about your business. Oh, we're gonna do my business, Dan. That's a definite. But let's get something straight. I'm in charge of changing my life. Not you. Not anyone. I don't care if it's a whole flock of dead llamas that got you to come in here and admit my business is a good idea. God bless the dead animals that have paved my road to fortune. So, Dan, in closing, I accept your interest in my business. Miles sticks out his hand, and Dan gladly shakes it. Dan, I thought your mouse killing days were over. Oh, no. <laughs> no mice, no mice. I have to replace a dead lizard for the new kid. Dan shakes the paper bag. Miles looks through Dan. You have a receipt? Nope. Dan smiles. Miles doesn't. Wanna hear that N word joke, Miles? No, Dan. I really fucking don't. We need each other, Miles. <laughs> we need each other. How to Bury Your Pets, a pod play in one part, starring Hugh Ross and Jonathan Davis. Written by David B. Harris. Sound editing by Joel Elliott. Music by Moses Luster in the Hollywood Lights. Additional music and mixing by Ned Douglas. Our website is thepodplay.com. Look for our other productions wherever you download or listen to podcasts.